Here are a few things you can do with the VFX Warp Stabilizer effect to improve your results and automatically add objects to a footage. In this tutorial, we'll explore the advanced options of the Warp Stabilizer effect and see why it has the VFX suffix, at least when you select it from the animation menu. So I have a couple of examples for you. The first one is this extreme shaky clip captured by Shaul Barlev, and he was sitting at the back of this scooter, and you can see the bumpy ride. It's a bit hard on the eyes, and for most of us, it is an unusable footage. So let's try to rescue it, first by applying the warp stabilizer as promised from the animation menu, where you can see the VFX suffix. After a few moments of analyzing and then stabilizing, we're going to get this result. Now this looks much better, but we have an obvious wobble effect, also known as the jello effect, and this appears when the camera is vibrating in situations such as handheld shots at telephoto settings or when shooting from a moving vehicle, which is exactly what we have here. So let's see what we can do in order to improve it. First, I'll open up the advanced settings. And the first one that we can try is the detailed analysis. If I'll check it, After Effects will need to analyze the footage again. And this means that it's actually going to put more trackers and will try to offer us a better result. So let's see the difference now. And I would argue that this is worse, not better. Now let's see what happens behind the scenes. I'm going to ask After Effects to show us the track points. And this is going to give us an idea for the areas that the warp stabilizer is taking under account in order to stabilize the clip. So for example, if you don't want it to take under account the areas around this biker, I can lasso around the unwanted trackers and press delete. And this is going to restabilize the shot and try to offer us a better solution. Notice that it will try to auto delete those points across time. It's a little bit difficult to see that the word time is here. So I'm going to expand this panel just a touch and I'm going to move my playhead. And if you want to go this way, then you'll need to actually go and make sure that those trackers are not going to be visible again because the effect is going to add them even after you deleted them. So I'm just going to remove them at this point, move forward a touch, and then I'll try to do it for this area as well. Move forward a touch. And of course, it is a little bit of a mouse and cat game. So let's see how this works. And I want to remind you, in order to see the results, you need to tick off the show track points. Because right now, if I'm going to preview the result, this is the untreated version. So when you show the track points, the warp stabilizer effect is deemed, as you can see, it's not functioning. So let's take it off, go back to the start, and then preview again to see if this helps. And as you can see, it has a minor effect and I'm going to rule that in this case and most other cases, this method of detailed analysis with manually deleting the unnecessary tracker points is not going to yield the desired result. So I'm just going to switch it off. And this means that After Effects is going to try to stabilize the shot again. It's going to ignore everything that I did so far because it is going to offer us a new solution, basically the default one. So what can we do in order to improve this? Well, it's right here, the third option, the rolling shutter ripple. By default, it is set to automatic reduction. Let's try the enhance reduction. And notice that we also have this cropless smooth more slider, but let's see how this looks now. And I can try to make it even more smooth by changing this value. I think that in this case, it doesn't have a big impact, but your mileage may vary depending on your footage. And there's no doubt that this helps to improve the result, but I can still see a very prominent wobble artifact. So in these scenarios, I would recommend to actually lower the smoothness to a single digit number. 
So I'll start with 5%. I'll go back to the beginning by pressing home on the keyboard and preview the clip again. And look at that. This looks much better. Let's try to lower it even to a lower number. Let's go with 2%. And I think it looks even better. Now don't go all the way to zero because if we are going to go all the way to zero, we are going to eliminate the stabilizing and the result is going to be reset completely. So low values between two and five are going to give you the desired result. In this case, combined of course, with the enhanced reduction for the rolling shutter ripple effect. And now this shot is usable again. Now let's switch to a different example of this boxing practice clip that I got of Adobe Stock. The link, if you want, is in the description so you can download and practice yourself. In this case, the fight here is in the VFX department and not in the boxing arena. Anyhow, as usual, I digress. So I'm going to escape out of full screen and then I'll switch off the visibility of this logo. We are going to return to it in a moment. For now, I'll select the clip, go again to the animation menu. By the way, you can also apply the warp stabilizer effect from the tracker panel. So totally up to you. You can also right click on the footage and from the track and stabilize, apply it from there. So whatever makes you more comfortable, let's just click on it and let After Effects analyze the clip in the background and hand over the result. I'll preview it by pressing zero on the numpad. And we can see that we have a very nice smooth result. I'll pause the playback. And I want to call your attention to the fact that in order to give us this stabilized motion, the effect is auto scaling the clip to 107.3%. I also want to remind you that we have this stabilized synthesize edges option here which is going to leave the scale at 100% and instead it's going to try and fill the details from different parts of the shot. And in this case, it actually works quite nice. However, if you will open up the advanced, you have more options to control this. So you can see that the synthesized input range in seconds by default is set to half a second. You can tell the effect to use more and this is going to, of course, slow down the process, but it will allow the effect to use more frames and hopefully give you better results. There is also an option to control the edge feather for the synthesized result, and you can play with it if you want, or you can open up this synthesized edge cropping and crop the footage if you are seeing black borders or you actually want to introduce them. So you have control of how After Effects is going to fill in the missing data. So let's go to the beginning and press spacebar and see the result. And in this case, we are not upscaling the clip and I think it looks quite nice. All right, I'll pause the playback. I'll go to the beginning. And now I want to show you two methods of how you can use stabilizing for VFX work. So I'm going to keep the settings as is but I'm going to switch the result to no motion. So this is going to restabilize the footage. And because we are using the synthesized edges option, it's going to need some time to fill in those missing details. But again, you can start playing it while the cache is cooking and see how this works. All right, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm going to let After Effects, of course, calculate it in the background because I want to show you something really cool. I'm going to change here the objective from stabilize to reversible stabilization. Now it looks like nothing is happening because for this trick to work, we'll need two copies of the warp stabilizer effect and sandwich between them, we can add additional information. So let me show you the setup. We'll need to duplicate the warp stabilizer effect and you can do it from the edit menu by choosing duplicate or of course by pressing command or control D. And then the second version needs to be set to reverse stabilization. I'm going to drill it up and then I'll select the warp stabilizer effect. 
and I'll double click on the clip, making sure that over here in the view, I'm actually setting it to the result of the first instance. Now, I'll switch to the clone stamp tool, which you can also get by pressing Command or Control B. And I'm going to enlarge the diameter by pressing Command or Control and dragging to the right. Now, this tool works very similarly to the same tool in Photoshop. However, this is painting on video. So it means that I can option or alt click on this target point to sample it. And by the way, you can also turn on the clone source overlay, which is going to give you this ghosting image and you can see exactly where you're going to start cloning. I'm going to click over here and then I'm just going to clone up this boxing bag. Something like this should work. And once I'm going to let go of the mouse and switch off this clone source overlay, I'm going to get another copy of the same bag. Now, because I'm using paint by default and haven't changed any of the settings, this is going to stick for the entire duration of this clip. Now, what we are looking at now is the result of the paint effect with the first instance of the warp stabilizer. But if I'll close the layer panel and return back to the composition, after this first warp stabilizer with the paint effect, we have a second version that we set to reverse stabilization. And this means that it will reintroduce the original motion back to the clip. So if I'll preview this, we can see the result. We have another bag hanging there, which looks really believable if you are not really watching the edge of the frame here. And I'll compensate for that in a moment. But it gets even better. I'll pause the playback. Remember that I had this logo over here. And let's say that I want to include another layer in this mix, which is an external layer like I have over here. Well, what I can do is select the second copy and then press Command D to duplicate another version. I'm going to close the ones that I don't need to work with. And now I have a few options. I'm going to switch off the visibility of the layer in the timeline because over here under Objective, I can apply the same motion to a desired target. Now you have two options here. First one, is to select the layer and then if I'll do this and select the target layer, it's going to switch off everything and show us that this layer now has the same motion of the original clip. However, in this case, what I would like to do is select the second option, which is going to apply the same motion to the target over the original. So we reintroduce the original motion back to the clip but sandwiched between them, we have this extra boxing bag, and on top of everything, we have this title. Now to cover up the missing information for this additional boxing bag, we can go to the effect menu, and from the distort category, add a transform effect for the entire thing here. And I think something along the lines of maybe 107 should be enough to cover our tracks here. Let's go to the end. I think we need to upscale it just a touch more. So let's go with 110. And of course we can sharpen it if there is a need. But since those guys are really in the background, I don't think that anyone will notice that there is a bit of degrading in terms of quality. Let's check it in full screen by maximizing this panel and preview the final result. And with that, we covered all the advanced options of the Warp Stabilizer Effect, a very powerful tool that can help you to smooth out shaky shots, even extreme ones, as well as offer cool VFX workflows for painting and cloning and using the data for tracking objects to the clip with the reverse stabilizations options. I hope these techniques will help you in your work. And until next time, this is Eran saying thank you and goodbye.